everyone. My name is Colleen and I'm an educator at the St. Louis Art Museum. Welcome to We Wednesday. Today we're going to be talking about helpers. Who do you think of when you think of a helper? Can you think of any helpers in your own community? We're going to be talking about what it means to be a helper and we're also going to be thinking about some helpers in our own communities today. We'll start by reading a story together. Then we'll be looking at some art from the museum's collection, and we'll end by making our own art together. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you'd like to get a closer look, if you'd like to talk about something with the people that you're with, or if you need to gather some art supplies. Are you ready? Let's get started. Today we're going to be reading a story called What Can a Citizen Do? If you've joined me for Wee Wednesday before, you may know that when I read a new book, I like to take a look at the cover to see if I can find out some things about the story before I read. Let's take a look at this cover together. What do you notice? I see a few different clues on this cover. I see several children here. And I notice that some of them have some tools in their hands. So I see a hammer, shovel, and a marker or a crayon. And they all have very different facial expressions. So some of them look excited. Some of them look like they're thinking about something. Some of them might be saying something. What do you think the story might be about? based on what we can see. Let's find out. What Can a Citizen Do? Written by Dave Eggers with art by Sean Harris. Now before we begin the story, I wanna talk about this word, citizen. Have you ever heard that word before? Did you know that you are a citizen? We're all citizens of the places that we live. That sounds like a lot of responsibility. But we're going to learn a little bit more about what it means to be a citizen while we read the story. So if you'd like, you can pause the video and talk with the people that you're with about what you think it means to be a citizen before we read the story. And then when we're finished, maybe we'll revisit and see if we learned anything. Let's get started. What in the world can a citizen do? Who can a citizen be? is just like you. A citizen can plant a tree. A citizen can help a neighbor. A citizen can join a cause. What are some ways that you've helped a neighbor in your community? A citizen can write a letter. A citizen can help change laws. Let's take a moment to take a look at this picture. What's going on here? I see a sign here that says no trumpets. How do you think the other people in the picture feel about that sign based on what we can see? Take a look at this picture now. What's happening here? Now I see a sign that says, OK, trumpets. And I see people have different facial expressions. It looks like this group of people came together to help change the law. 
How do you think they feel about that? A citizen can right a wrong. A citizen can turn things around. A citizen can th get things right side that have been upside down. A citizen should be engaged. A citizen should care and care. causes that you care about. For me, I'm very passionate about the environment and protecting it. So there are a few ways that I can care about that cause. I can reduce my energy use and my waste. I can recycle and I can encourage others in my community to do the same. What are some ways that you can help your cause that you care about? A citizen should build things, save things. A citizen can be a bear. Yes, a citizen can be a bear. A citizen can be a kid. A citizen can wear pink pants. A citizen cannot stay hid. A citizen's not what you are. A citizen is what you do. A citizen cannot forget the world is more than you. We're part of a society. Who's a part of this society? Who's a part of your society? One full of joy and pain. A land of latticed people, none of us the same. And if we help just one, help one lonely soul, we open doors, we bring in light. We bind us all and make us whole. So forget yourself for just a second. Grab a shovel or a pen. Do something for another. Don't you dare doubt that you can. Everything makes an impact on a bigger big than you. And it all starts with the question, what can a citizen do? What did these citizens accomplish together? The end. Now I want you to think about that question that I asked you at the beginning of the story. What is a citizen? Has your idea about what a citizen is changed based on what we've read in the story or has it stayed the same? I invite you to think about your favorite part of the story and talk about that with the people that you're with. 
we're going to travel to the museum now to look at some works of art. Let's imagine how we might get there. Since we're talking about being good helpers today, let's imagine helping a member of our community get to the museum. Could you offer someone a ride in a car? Or could you offer to assist someone in taking the bus? Or could you guide someone on a walk who's not quite sure how to get there? You decide. Once you've decided, if you'd like, you can close your eyes and imagine yourself going. Ooh, that was a really lovely journey today, helping someone get to the museum. I'm really glad that we made it. In order to get ready to look at our works of art, we're going to be doing an experience I'm calling our Mindfulness Minute. Mindfulness is taking the time to slow down and really pay attention to what you're doing. Since we're talking about being good helpers today, we're going to focus on our breath and taking care of ourselves. In order to be a good helper to others, we first have to take care of ourselves. Breathing is a great way to slow down and relax when you might be feeling excited or angry or scared. So we're going to do a couple breathing techniques today. If there's anything that doesn't feel comfortable, feel free to skip it or move and breathe in a way that does feel comfortable to you. Ready? To start, we're going to get into a comfortable position. And for our first breathing technique, we're going to put our two fingers out in front of us like this in a number one. And these are going to be our birthday candles. Have you ever blown out a candle on a birthday treat before? We're going to do just that with our breath. So we're going to breathe in through our nose and then breathe out with our mouth. And when we breathe out, we're going to blow out one of our candles. Let's try it. Breathe in through your nose and breathe out and blow out one of those candles. Great. I think we have one left. Let's try again. Breathe in through your nose and breathe out through your mouth. Awesome. Let's try another breathing technique. This time we're going to put our hand out in front of us in the shape of a starfish. And we're going to use our other hand to trace along our hand. And while we trace, we're going to breathe in when we move our finger up and we're going to breathe out when we move our finger down. Okay, let's do that together. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth, 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 in through your nose, out through your mouth. Great job. I hope you find these breathing techniques helpful in order to take care of yourself so that you can be a good helper to others. I feel much more ready to look at some really amazing works of art. We're going to look at some works of art from the museum's collection together. If you'd like, you can scroll down on the page to get a closer look at the images we'll be viewing. Feel free to pause the video at any time to do this. Take a close look at this work of art. What do you see? Let's zoom in to get a closer look. What new details can you see now? This is an ancient Egyptian figurine called Shabti of Samtik. It was created over 2000 years ago and it is about as tall as a marker that you might color with. Shabti is the ancient Egyptian word for answerer. These figures were thought to perform all sorts of helpful tasks, like chores in the afterlife, which is why they were so frequently placed in tombs. If you could have a collection of Shaptis to do your chores, what would you have them help you with? A tomb could have hundreds of Shaptis, one for every day of the year which is why they are one of the most common artifacts to survive from ancient Egypt. What do you think people will find from our time thousands of years from now?
Let's see how another artist created a work of art featuring a helper. Look carefully at this work of art. What do you see? Let's make sure we see all the details in this painting. What's going on in this picture? What do you see that makes you say that? This is a painting by an artist named Winslow Homer. It's called The Country School. It pictures a one-room schoolhouse in a rural town in New England about 150 years ago. Based on what we can see, who do you think is the teacher? If you have attended a school, how does this school look different from your own? Let's imagine we're inside this painting. Which student would you be? Would you be the student reading to themselves? Or in the group working together? Or might you be taking a break while rubbing your eyes? Helpers come in all shapes and sizes. Sometimes helpers are right before us in our community, like teachers. Think about helpers that inspire you to be helpful to your community. If you'd like, talk about those helpers with the people that you're with. Now that we looked at some art together, let's travel back home so we can make our own art. So offer a ride to someone or assist someone in taking the bus or guide someone walking and let's head home. For our art making project today, we are going to be making our own shop dies or helper sculptures of someone important to us. So we've been talking about helpers in our own communities and ways we can be helpers ourselves. So we're going to create small sculptures inspired by those people. Maybe it's someone in your community, like a teacher or a firefighter, or maybe it's a leader you look up to, or maybe it's a friend or family member. And maybe this will inspire you to be a helper yourself. So we're going to need a few different materials to make our sculptures. Um, if you'd like to use clay that you have at home, whether it's Play-Doh or another type of clay, you can use that. Or if you want to make your own clay, I'm going to be making some salt dough today. So to make salt dough, we need a few different materials. We're going to need a fourth of a cup of salt, a half cup of flour, a fourth of a cup of water, then we're gonna need a bowl to mix it in and something to mix with like a spoon or a spatula. And if you want to add color your, to your dough, you can use food coloring. Other items you can use to add color are powdered Kool-Aid or powdered Jello. You can mix those with water and add it to your dough to add color. You can also experiment with some spices that you might have in your kitchen to try to add color that way too. Um, if you want to do any kind of detail work on your sculpture, you can use things like a fork or a toothpick. So we might need those to add some details when we're finished sculpting. And then lastly, we're going to need something to build our sculpture on. Um, so I just have a piece of cardboard here. This is actually a cereal box that I cut up to build my sculpture on. So to start, let's mix our dough. And since we're going to be mixing and kneading, um, today you might want to get to a place where you can get a little messy. So your kitchen is a great place to work um, to make your salt dough. So first I'm going to put my salt and my flour in the bowl and I'm going to mix those together first. And this recipe makes enough to create one small sculpture. So if you want to make a bunch of sculptures or if you're doing this with other people, you can always double or triple the recipe and that will work just fine. So now I have my flour and my salt mixed together and now I'm going to add the water. And I'm just gonna mix it together until it's combined with my spatula. And you can see it's kind of gloopy and a little sticky. And so you can mix together as much of it as you can with your spatula and your spoon but then you're going to need to use your hands. So I think that's about as mixed together as it's gonna be with my spatula, so I'm just gonna take off the rest. So this is the fun part, if you like getting messy. 
And so I'm just gonna kind of make sure I get all of those crumbs incorporated into my salt dough. Um, another tip is if you're making this with really little ones who like to put things in their mouths, if you want to make this taste safe or it's okay if they put it in your mouth, you can microwave the flour before you mix your dough together, um, like high on 30, with 30 seconds or so, um, and that will make this okay to taste. They're not going to like it when they taste it because it's going to be really salty, but um, it's, it'll be safe if they accidentally put some in their mouths. All right, so I have this kind of, now I have all the dough that was in my bowl, now it's in my hands. And now what we need to do is we actually need to knead it, which is a way of mixing dough. So I just have some paper here. To knead, I'm actually going to put some wax paper down. So I have a piece of wax paper here. If you have parchment paper, or if you're just working on your kitchen counter or table, that's fine. Um, but this can get kind of sticky, so wax paper is nice because it doesn't stick to the wax paper. So to knead your dough, if you have your dough in front of you, you wanna take the end of it at the top and just kind of fold it in and then push it with the palm of your hand right here. So push and then fold, and you can see it's still kind of sticky, which is why we need to knead it. Push and fold, push and fold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knead for a little bit and you should knead for Oh, a few minutes and then once your dough is really nice and combined then you know it's ready to work with. So I'm going to knead my dough together now. Okay so I've kneaded my dough for a little bit and now it's got this nice soft consistency. It's still a little sticky but it's going to be nice and easy to work with. So if you want to add color, this is the point where you could add color. So you can, of course, add color to your whole batch of dough, or if you want to make different colors, then you can separate out your dough um, and add colors in different bowls. So I'm just going to make a portion of my dough a different color to add kind of some detail. So I'm just going to take a hunk of it off, and I'm going to use one of my bowls that I was using before. And I have some blue food coloring, and if you're using food coloring, you don't need a whole lot of it, just a drop or two will add some nice color to your to your dough. So I'm just gonna add one, two drops there. And food coloring has a tendency to stain, so you might wanna be careful when you're doing this. You can stain your clothes or whatever it is that you're working on. So I just put a couple drops in and now I'm just mixing it together with my hands. Now I have some blue salt dough to add some details to my helper sculpture. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clean up a little bit and then we'll come back and we'll get started creating our helper sculptures. Okay, so we're ready to make our helper sculptures now. So we've got our salt dough and whatever colors we want. We have something to build our sculpture on and we have some tools to help us do some detail work if we want to do that towards the end. So I want to show you a couple techniques for ways to use clay if you haven't used clay or play-doh or something like that before. So one really easy way to manipulate your dough is to roll it between your palms like this and that can help you to make balls or things that are circular. This is great for making things like heads or it's just a nice kind of jumping off point to help you shape your dough into whatever shape you want it to make. So rolling into a ball is a great place to start. Another technique you can use is patting. So you can really just smack your dough between the palms of your hand to flatten it. That's a great technique. It also helps you kind of create a nice smooth surface for your dough. And another thing you can do is rolling. So you can roll your dough between your palms like this to make kind of long skinny ropes and this can be nice if you're trying to make arms and legs and hair and other kind of things for your helper sculpture 
and you can kind of rip those apart as you need. You can combine them together to make other shapes. So those are some techniques. Another great technique to use when you're working with any kind of dough or clay is pinching. So pinching things between your thumb and your pointer finger. That's a great way to get your clay to stand up or create a different kind of shape. So those are some techniques that we can use. But now on to making our shop tees or our little helper sculptures. So I'm gonna make my sculpture kind of in the same style as the shop tee that we saw when we were looking at artwork. Um, so it's just gonna be kind of a, a singular or one um, just piece of clay with some details on it. But if you want to make yours with legs and arms that you add or other kind of elements, you can do that. So you get to make your sculpture in whatever style that you want. You're the sculptor and the artist, so that's your choice. So this is just one way to do it. So to start, I'm gonna create kind of the base or the body of my helper. And I decided that I'm going to make a sculpture of my mail carrier, because um, I was thinking about helpers in my community. And I think mail carriers are such wonderful helpers to us. You know, we often don't get to see them maybe as much as we would like. They deliver our mail and our packages and no matter the weather all these days of the year and I just think they're great community heroes so I'm going to make one of my mail carrier who I love seeing and waving at and saying hello to so here's kind of the body of my sculpture you see I was just kind of patting flattening pinching I'm kind of making it in that body shape kind of like a shop tee that we look the shop tee that we looked at and I might separate the head to make the head a little bit more pronounced so you can kind of rip pieces off as you're making them so I'm going to roll that into more of a traditional head shape and reattach it and to reattach or to attach different elements of your dough together you just want to use that pinching pinching technique or that's kind of smushing technique. So now I have kind of a head for my sculpture. I have a body to kind of start working with. And now I'm gonna to get to working on the other elements. So I might pinch the middle part here to make some indents for the arms. and pinch the neck a little bit more. And now I kind of have the body of my helper sculpture. So now I think I'm going to add some elements in blue. So I was thinking about mail carriers and their uniforms often are blue or have some blue on them. So I was thinking about using some blue for my sculpture. So you can think about that when you're deciding what colors to use. So I might try to add a hat here. So I often see my mail carrier wearing a hat. So there's the top, but I think I might need a, a front to my hat there, a bill. And sculpture is a great place to experiment. And you're gonna try things and have to try it again and again because it might not work out the way that you want. There's the hat for my mail carrier. And now I think they need their uniform. Okay, so I added a few more details with blue. I added some pants, my hat, I added their bag um, where they carry the mail in. And now I think I'm gonna add some details with my toothpick and my fork. So the toothpick and the fork or whatever other kind of instruments you have around your home, like plastic utensils, chopsticks, anything like that can be great to add details. And you see, I'm just using the toothpick like I would a pencil and just kind of pushing and making those indentations. Mm -hmm. 
So there is my mail carrier. Now you can leave this the way that it is and let it air dry and that will happen you know within a day or two or if you want to speed up the process you can pop it in the oven at 250 degrees for about 10 minutes and it will harden right up and that's going to be our shop D or helper sculptures with salt dough thank you for joining me today here at we wednesday we hope you had fun i wanted to show you another example of a helper sculpture that i made so this is the one that we made together. This is my mail carrier helper sculpture that I made with salt dough and I added some details with my blue food coloring salt dough. I also made another sculpture just using the regular salt dough. I didn't add any color to this one and this is one that I made of my aunt who is a nurse um, because I think she's a helper to our community. And so I added her stethoscope that she uses to listen to people's hearts um, when she's taking care of patients. Um, so that's another option is you can think about people in your family um, or really specific people that you know that are helpers in our community. So we would love to see your helper sculptures. Please share them with us on social media. You can use the hashtag STLArtMuseum and we Wednesday. We hope to see you next time. Keep on creating. Bye.